Good afternoon, my name is Dr. Mike Parchewski, and I'm here with the DWD podcast team. And today we're gonna to present to you on placing a guided astra implant into an anatomically correct surgical model uh, that was 3D printed with the help of Dr. Josh Egerbrett. This model was created in multi-layer, so it simulates cancellous bone, cortical bone, and also has an overlaying gingival tissue that actually can be cut or tissue punched to simulate actual implant placement. This allows us to be able to do hands-on lecturing and training without having to use cadaver or pig jaws. So we're gonna be able to demonstrate that for you guys today and hopefully we'll see you soon in one of our lectures. Um, if you have any questions about the video, please like or subscribe below. Um, and if for any other further education events that are coming up, please check our Instagram at Digital Workflow Dentistry. Enjoy the video. Now here we have our treatment planning in our CCAT implant software for our implant placement of the 3.6. As you can see, we have our implant in place and we're happy with the design and the position. We have our CAD CAM data that's been merged in and we have, so we're able to plan it to the crown that we've designed in the prime scan and we are now ready to go and export this back into the prime scan in order to be able to fabricate. So here we have our surgical guide design in place to replace our 3-6 tooth that is missing with an implant. And this guide is now ready to go into the milling chamber to be fabricated. Here we have our Astra implant kit, our anatomically correct model with the surgical guide in place. And we have our implant that we are going to place today. Here's a close-up of our Astra guided surgical kit. As you can see, the P is the punch, set of punch on the left, color-coded to the size of implant. 3.6 is your purple, 4.2 is your yellow, and 4.8 is your blue. And then as you know, these numbers that read 6 to 8, 9 to 11, or 13 to 15, correspond to the length of implant that you're using and the pathway that you will follow when you're using your surgical guide. So today's implant we are actually placing an 11 millimeter implant. It is a 4.2 so we'll be following that yellow track with the 9 to 11 implants. As you come across that track we get to our final drill bit and we move up. When we move up into the accessory burrs for the 4.2 you will notice it's A or B. So our choice there is for more dense bone, we'll use the B, and uh, cortical bone and less dense cortical bone, we will use the A. And again, same thing is present when we get into the 4.8s and the A or B. And at the top, you can see it's based on either a 4.8 solid implant or a 4.8 conical implant. We do have extra burrs here. These are the V or X burrs. The V or X burrs are again color coded and sized based on, on the guided position and which sleeve you are using, which depends on the diameter of your implant. And the V is only going to drill out extra at the apex of the implant and the X is going to drill out uh, also on the extra on the wall. So dense bone such as the mandible um, or mandibular posterior, you might find that you're needing uh, to over prep uh, to be able to get that implant to go down without over torquing um, as it gets to its last few threads. Then we have our driver, we have our torque wrench, and we have the ability to either measure with a protected end in case we're in the near the sinus or our blunt end where we're measuring our depth of our osteotomy or our gingiva. And there you have the Astra surgical kit. And so what we are going to actually do is take out the burrs that we're going to do. And this is something that I always will do is only take out the burrs that I'm actually going to be using in the case so that I'm not getting any debris, any blood or any contaminants in the kit or in the little holes that are where the um, implants or the implant drivers go back in so we basically only take out the drill bits that we are using 
and then we will run them through ultrasonic and sterilize the whole kit again um, to be ready for the next case. Good afternoon everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Sharma from Digital Workflow Dentistry and I'm going to be doing a demonstration of an implant placement. We have an Astrotech 4.2C implant. As you can see here, we have a 3D printed model which actually replicates cancellous cortical bone and the gingiva. So it's a multi-layer 3D printed model that has different layers to the plastic and of course that resin is going to replicate the, dish, the different human tissues that we utilize. Um, Dr. Parchewski has gone ahead and planned the surgical guide using Cytexis 4. So this is a Serac Guide 3, uh, which of course will have the built-in surgical stops onto the osteotomy burrs. Of course, testing it out, not surprisingly, it fits really effectively. So just quickly going through the layout that we have here, as Dr. Parchewski has explained in the previous video, we always like to lay out specifically the burrs that we're going to be utilizing for simplicity purposes and so we're not cross-contaminating our kit. Uh, obviously this is not a real patient so I have this towel as we'll be spraying some saline on here. Normally this would be on a sterile surgical kit with drapery. So just quickly going through our armamentarium, of course we have the tissue punch appropriate for the size of the implants. We have a curette for the reflection of that uh, residual tissue. We have our initial cortical burr and then we go through a sequence of the osteotomy burrs finishing for the 4.2C um, Astra implants. And then of course our final finishing cortical burr. We have our implant driver with the hand attachment here. Uh, the corresponding torque wrench. You can see here we've got our healing cap and the corresponding uh, screwdriver for that. And in case we want to utilize a workflow where we are utilizing uh, the scan body immediately, we have our intraoral scan body. So we can place this implant. If we're happy with the tissue profile and everything, we place that on, we scan. A few months later after osteointegration, we are actually ready to put a permanent restoration on there. Or if you want to do some tissue conditioning and in the next few days actually put on a temporary uh, crown onto that area, you could certainly do, the, do that and we'll demonstrate that momentarily. So we're going to go ahead and start the placement of this process utilizing the sequence that we have laid out before us. So we're gonna be starting with the tissue punch. You can see the surgical guide is firmly in place over top of the edentula space. Place that into the guided component until a bit of pressure and we activate the rheostat with gentle downward pressure. So tissue punch is complete and he can now use the curette to remove the little bit of the tissue punch piece. So you can see we have it mostly removed here, but sometimes there's occasionally a little bit of a tag that's still remaining. I'll oftentimes just go back over that without the surgical guide in place and you can see that that's nicely removed and all the areas are clear. Of course, we want to ensure that there's no soft tissue residual area over the bone, so just cure at that, confirm that that aspect is completed. We don't want to transmit that soft tissue down into the osteotomy site. And you can see where the tissue is into that area. Okay, so we have the surgical guide placed back onto the model. Uh, we're going with the first cortical osteotomy burr. You can see it has a little notch on there which will just penetrate slightly into the cortical plate, indexing it. We'll place this over top, engaging into the surgical guide, and we'll activate that. Perfect, passing that through passively there having lots of saline spray going through. And you can confirm that you're down into that aspect and you can see we're penetrating through the gingiva into the 
cortical bone. Now, you can remove the surgical guide and check this if you're interested in doing so. Obviously, we have a high level of confidence with this as we do it frequently. This is a color printed model, so you can see we're into another layer of the cancellous bone. Let's reapproximate the surgical guide and let's continue on with the next osteotomy burr. So I know Mike's already gone over this, but you can see the sliding aspect on this, which will be the stop component. We again will reapproximate this, engage that surgical sleeve, and activate the rheostat. And you can see that's vertically stopped at that point. Yeah, so one, one point to make is when you guys are putting the burrs in the patient's mouth is to you can slide that sleeve down. So sometimes using like a Holland back or something that can push the sleeve all the way down helps to, to get it seated in the mouth. It's a little easier when we're doing it on the model, but sometimes it's nice to just pull that sleeve down and seat it into the guide before you start drilling. Just like so. This is the second one that we're utilizing. And that's what Mike was discussing right there. Activating the rheostat down to length. Now again, at this point, we can check the component to see where our placement is. And you can see that that's passing directly through the surgical guide right into the center component. So as Mike mentioned, once again, you can push this component, the sleeve down into the surgical guide, activate, lots of saline going through. And at this point, really, we're essentially in autopilot here. Now, if you want to pause at this point or at a previous step and take a guide pit to confirm that you're in the appropriate inclination, if it's your first or second case, great. Obviously, once you go through this process, you develop a lot of confidence with the workflow, with the CBCT accuracy, and you're comfortable with the surgical guide, so it's probably not necessary. Uh, but again, to just pause to reassure yourself initially, no issues there. And then we'll go to the finishing burr, which is going to remove any of the bone tags, etc., that will be present from the initial osteotomy burrs. And you can see not a lot of resistance to this at this point. Okay. So at this point, we're now removing our surgical guide. We can utilize our curette to make sure that there is no residual material in here. And with new sharp osteotomy burrs, we don't really see anything. And we're clear now, ready to place the implant. Now let's bring, can we bring that model up closer just to let them see the close up there? That's perfect there. So as you can see, the, it's uh, the whitish, outer layer is a rubber simulated gingiva and then you'll notice that the cortical bone is pink uh, which comes through a white uh, cortical bone layer so that you can see where the cancellous bone is um, quite easily and that will be obviously um, has been 3d printed to simulate um, a weaker a weaker bone easier to drill through so i like to use the rotary implant driver uh, when I'm initially placing the implant. Mike, I'm not sure what your preference is. You can certainly chime in in a moment. With guide, I always go the same way. Perfect. And then obviously, you know, there might be an opportunity where you have to bring that implant back out and reapproximate the um, osteotomy site. So let's go ahead. And then, and if you um, just maybe give them another quick view, just showing them measuring your depth of your gingiva as well as measuring uh, the depth of the osteotomy because those are two important points after you've used your guide you really want to confirm that you've got adequate adequate gingiva thickness and you've got um, adequate length uh, for your implant placement 
So in this instance, I simply just approximate the probe next to the gingiva and I'm going to apically push down until I can feel the crest of the bone. And then obviously we've got a measurement there which is coming in at 2.5 millimeters. So it tells me the lingual component I've got enough and then on the buccal aspect, a comparable amount there. And circumferentially, it'll be the same. And then as we're going down into depth of implant, you know, obviously the periprobe will have some pre-arranged measurements on this. Uh, we're going to be placing the 13 millimeter implant, minusing the size of the gingival gum tissue. We're very, very close to that aspect. So approximating from that perspective can be helpful. Mike, anything to add? Uh, no. So again, let's say, for example, you have a case where you only have one millimeter of gingiva thickness because that's the patient's phenotype. Then you might be wanting to place this implant subcrestally, the two millimeters to make up. So now you, what you might have to do is take your guide off and actually hand drill a little bit deeper to make up for that. Or in your pre-planning, you would pre-plan your implant to be placed in that position subcrestally. But it also can be one of those things that you make that decision um, at the time of the treatment, but it's important to take those measurements. And Mike, do you want to talk about what you're going to do in terms of an immediate implant, in terms of how much further you might bury that implant into the bone? So if it's an immediate implant, uh, there's a, several factors to take into account, the adjacent teeth, the adjacent bone, the buccal plate, the lingual plate, but also, but in general rule of thumb, I go two to three millimeters uh, sub uh, midpoint uh, crestal, uh, in order to allow um, bone remodeling, bone, yeah, 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 great. And so we'll have obviously more information on that for a future subsequent course. So this is of course the packaging that the Astra implant comes in. You place the driver in there and much like most implant systems, it's just going to slide out from that perspective. I've obviously made the modification on our Tineo uh, system. So we're now at a 25 RPM and 45 Newton centimeter. We're going to place this into the implant site, activate and of course my saline has been turned off. Great. And that's down to length at that point. Going to remove the implant driver. I could feel the uh, engagement, and as I'm looking down into this space, I can see that we are just below the height of the bone and pretty close to it on the buccal component. Might be a bit hard to see from that perspective. Perfect. And Mike's telling me we've got that in focus. So again, now if we're wanting to uh, verify the implant placement, we typically would take a, an x-ray at this point. Um, if we are happy with that x-ray prior to us proceeding with the healing cap, in this case, or a cover screw, we may want to actually scan this case. So obviously if we wanted to scan, we simply just place the IO scan body into the site and then utilizing a hand screw, just gently tight that, tighten that and it's engaging, it's indexed into that. Uh, in this scenario, we maybe want to let the gingiva heal, so we would simply just take our healing cap, place that into the aspect and finger tighten. And there you have it. Guided implants will be very simplistic to restore parallel with the adjacent teeth uh, screw retained restoration and that is the workflow that digital workflow dentistry uses. Great. Well, thanks Vish. That's awesome. Um, another thing just for you guys to remember is you are able to 
Um, if this was an immediate case, you could also use a temp abutment and build acrylic around it or a composite around it to build up um, sort of a custom healing abutment. And you can obviously leave it like we did with the healing abutment, or you can use your scan and actually start fabricating your custom abutment and crown. Um, my, my choice with the new um, prime implant that's coming out would be because of its coarser threads to often scan post at the same time if I'm using a tissue punch. If I am uh, flapping or I am doing immediate, then I would do um, the healing abutment or the custom healing abutment at that time and then scan post at about two months. Um, for my post-op, I always take a low dose 5x5 3D and the reason is I like to see whether or not I have anything going through buccal or lingually. If there's any weak bone or anything that I see on that, I can flap at the time and place some Ossix um, Volumax or some Ossix uh, membrane over the area if needed. Um, thank you guys for watching. Remember to click and subscribe below. And for anything further, please check out our links in our Instagram at Digital Workflow Dentistry for our podcasts and other uh, tutorial videos. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.